Fisherman Rothman, 97.1 The Fan. Anthony Rothman, Demetri Stanley, Jeff Thidoff. Welcome in. Hope you're having a great day. Good-looking one out there. And uh, always like to talk NFL with the legends of the game and really pleased to be joined by the former Dallas Cowboy legend, Roger Staubach. Thanks for joining us, Roger. Hi, Anthony. How are you doing? Fantastic. Uh, real pleasure. I guess let's start with uh, what's keeping you busy these days. I know uh, after your career you were heavily involved in real estate. Uh, are you still doing that? Well, I, I still am. Our, our, our company, is the Staubach Company, was 30 years old. We we sold to Jones Lang LaSalle four and a half years ago, and I'm still still on, I'm on their board, and I still am active with uh, Jones Lang LaSalle, and we uh, we have five kids and 15 grandkids here in Dallas, so I'm 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 staying busy. <laughs> so uh, we got a we got a big group here. In fact, my wife and I, you know, we both grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio, so we've been been here in Dallas for a long time. But uh, Woody Hayes recruited me for Ohio State back in the old days. If they would have thrown the ball a little bit, I, I might have ended up as a as a Buckeye, you know, at, at Ohio State. So that's unbelievable. I have not heard that. I know, obviously, uh, you had opportunities, uh, went into the Naval Academy, and how close was it uh, to kind of maybe going the traditional route? Well, I was, you know, I was, uh, I, I didn't play quarterback really a lot till my senior year in high school, and uh, I had a good year, and I ran a lot, and and I was uh, recruited by Purdue and uh, in Ohio State. I went up to see, a, and my mom and I went up to Ohio State. My mother said, you know, it's a big school, you know, I don't know, and so we go up there, and Woody Hayes gets her into a room and talks to her and never even mentioned football, all the things about Ohio State, and then, then he then she, then he went. Then my mother went off with uh, Woody's wife to lunch, and so then Woody personally had. I mean, he was he 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 was calling me, and and uh, there was a bird dog, but he, he was actually recruiting me personally, and and uh, so we're driving back to Cincinnati. My mother said, "You know, if you want to go to Ohio State, you can go to Ohio State." <laughs> and so <laughs> he was fantastic. He was a, but back then it was a kind of a three-yard uh, cloud of dust offense. You know, they had. Uh, uh, Ferguson and White were the fullbacks, and uh, so I ended up signing a, a letter of intent that if I went to a Big Ten school, I'd go to Purdue. And uh, but I was a you know I was a high State fan, and you know I was, grew up in Cincinnati, and uh, wasn't that far. Columbus wasn't that far from Cincinnati, and uh, if they would have thrown the ball a little bit more, I might have might have gone to Ohio State. Did you now? You said that you didn't play a ton of quarterback. So what was the conversation like with Woody Hayes when he was recruiting you? Did he say? You know, I really like you as a quarterback, but this is how I run my offense. You'd fit in perfectly, or did you try to convince him at all that, hey, I, I need to develop my skills. I may want to go to the NFL one day. How did this work out? Well, I didn't. I didn't think about the NFL then at, at that time, but I. But I wanted to throw in college, and I did. You know, I did say, and he said, well, you know, we 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 do things differently. We change all the time, and. Uh, <laughs> But he really, it was. I mean, Woody Hayes just had a. I mean, it, he had a fantastic system at that time. It was. Uh, tough defense and and you know then Tom Matty was a quarterback but Joe Sparma was the quarterback that went who uh, who I who was in high school at my my time he 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 was the quarterback and Joe Joe was a was a very good passer in high school so and Paul Warfield was there too we we all came out we all played in the college uh, high school all-star game the north south game and and Paul really was I mean he didn't they didn't throw that much to Paul Warfield at, at uh, Ohio State so he, he just he, Woody Hayes was a fantastic football coach. It just today's uh, as you can see in the NFL today. Then they went to the wishbone, but today the colleges are have a much more wide open offense, and you're seeing all these young quarterbacks coming into the NFL that are really, uh, uh, you know, really great quarterbacks from from their college. Uh, you know, Luck and Griffin, and but back in the old days, Woody was a more of a running team. And then a lot of a lot of schools, big schools, though, had that wishbone too. Which, fortunately, at Navy, we we kind of had a wide open offense at Navy, and it 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 you know you know helped me develop as a quarterback because my senior year in high school we didn't throw very much either. So I learned to throw at Navy really. I can imagine Roger. I can envision Woody saying, "Now listen, Roger, when you throw the ball, three things can happen, and two of them are really bad." Because that that's, <laughs> that's really well, that's a, yeah. that was that was his line, right? <laughs> Oh yeah, he spoke. He spoke to our high school too at our high school football banquet, and I really liked Woody Hayes. Woody Hayes also uh, went. He and Landry were really great friends. Or Gil Brandt, our, our personnel guy, and and when we played the Steelers in one of the Super Bowls in Miami, on the bus going out to the game, 
I'm sitting next to Woody Hayes on the bus. On the, t- I mean, he's on the team bus, and he's and I'm trying to look at my game plan, go over things, and he's sitting next to me, and he's talking about, oh yeah, Roger, you should have come to Ohio State, you know. And I said, hey, <laughs> today, coach, I, we're playing the Super Bowl here in a few minutes. I got to look at this game plan here. <laughs> but he, he he was really he he was really a good guy. I, I really liked Woody Hayes. All right, so you nearly played for Woody Hayes, one of the great coaches of all time, and then you play for Tom Landry. Was Landry as calm and composed as he looked, the dapper guy on the sidelines or behind closed doors in the locker room? Was he a feisty guy or always the same? No, he was, he was, he was, he was, he was amazing. He was always composed and he, uh, he had a sense of humor though. I mean, he, he was, you know, I've heard him speak a lot of times. He had a good sense of humor, but he was very serious and very, uh, that's who he was. And he, uh, he, he was, he was a good man too. And he lived his life that way. And, but he was a really good X and O coach and a very, very good coach. And, uh, uh, we know he won consistently, you know, of course in the seventies, we were, um, the only, I mean, we won two Super Bowls, but it, it really was Oakland and Miami and Pittsburgh, uh, in the AFC in the seventies. And so Dallas was really the strong team in the NFC, but we, we know, we, we, you know, we lost game. We lost twice to the Steelers and, you know, we won a few Super Bowls, but we lost. So, uh, it wasn't always hunky dory, and the Steelers had a great team. And that that uh, thirty-five to thirty-one when they beat us in Super Bowl twelve, uh, that really uh, that really or Super Bowl thirteen, that that really uh, that defined the seventies as far as Super Bowls. And uh, the Steelers were uh, they they were a heck of a football team. Talking to the legendary quarterback Roger Staubach here on ninety-seven point one, the fan, Super Bowl MVP, two-time Super Bowl champ. You mentioned the time he lost to the Steelers. You retired. Pretty close to after that, right? I, re- I retired after the uh, '79 season in the spring of '80. Correct. I was. I, I, play, I got a chance to play 11 years. Did you want to play more? Was that uh, a weird time for you to hang it up? Uh, you know, I had a good year my last year. Right. We uh, lost in the playoff to Los Angeles, and uh, but I I had two concussions my last year. I had a I had a total of six with the Cowboys and. And I was 38, and uh, but I, I was. They wanted me to play a couple more years, and we had a good backup quarterback in Danny White. Uh, Terrific. And I thought it was just the time to, to do it, and I I did miss it for the first two years, especially because I knew I could still play. Uh, but uh, the concussions were a factor, and um, this doctor said, "Hey, you 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 know you're fine now, but if you you know the next one, you, you could be you know have too many of them," and and. Uh, and so that was a bit of a, you know, back then uh, it was a, kind of a serious deal because I had two my last year and being 38 and five kids and everything else. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, But I missed football for the first two years especially. But after that I knew that, you know, my time was up. And uh, so I, I look back and say maybe I could have played another two years. But uh, yeah. I, I still feel I made the right decision. It's a big deal now, Roger, with the guys and whether teams are – uh, had some negligence, whether he disclosed enough to these guys. I mean, it is the profession they've chosen. It's rough. It's violent. You played in an era where you're probably paying the price now where quarterbacks were treated like rag dolls, and now they're protected. Uh, do you think it's okay for these players to be involved in lawsuits against the NFL as far as the concussion thing goes? And Over 3,500 players are involved. Uh, right. I, I, I personally don't feel the NFL intentionally uh, I think they learned a lot, just like, you know, you, you hurt your knee or your shoulder and you know, it's going to get better. You have to get it. I think the head was not uh, looked into enough. There was not enough data. Uh, they probably should have done that, but they, I think as they, as, as it gradually took place, it, you know, obviously uh, concussions, especially if they're close together, can cause cause some issues. And I, I, I don't think they intentionally tried to hide the data that they had that said that uh, you know you need to hold players out longer. I always played the next week when I, I but when I had a concussion, I'm talking about getting knocked out and not playing the rest of the game. And but I always played the next week, and I really didn't have a CAT scan till the end of my career. And they they, they just didn't feel it was that necessary because you start feeling good again. And and so I don't think it. I don't think the NFL intentionally tried to hide, uh, but but again, I'm not involved in these lawsuits, and and uh, I'm sure there's it's going to be a it's still you know it's a big issue. The NFL is trying to do more to protect uh, players and the helmet to helmet stuff, but it's still it's a rough game, and you make a decision, you're you're going out there, you're you're putting yourself, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's not a 
it's, it's you know it's a it's a brutal game actually so it's a, it's even you know today there's players are bigger and faster they, than they were in my days you know you mentioned the navy thing and i just find it so amazing that first of all you win the heisman there which is unheard of now you wouldn't think a guy that that played for navy could win the heisman you do that uh and then you come out and and you didn't start your nfl career for four years how did you keep sharp how were you able to come into the league as a 27 year old rookie well i was able to uh i had a tour in vietnam and uh but i always worked out wherever i was and but i then i got stationed to pensacola naval air station my last couple of years and we we did have a base football i mean i had a I was a Navy lieutenant, and I had a very responsible job there. But we we got together after late in the afternoon, and we had a lot of Navy pilots or former college players. So we we had a base team that helped. Uh, I played on that, and uh, uh, and then I, I also went to two weeks, tr- uh, took leave, and went to a cowboy training camp uh, for two weeks. And that's when I knew I could uh, play, and they knew I could play. Talking to the Roger Staubach, the great quarterback uh, for the Dallas Cowboys, with Veterans Day coming up. Uh, the NFL is launching its uh, Salute to Service campaign with all 32 teams. I know uh, it's very near and dear to your heart, and you're involved in it. Yeah, the uh, U- USAA and the NFL are they got a great program, and I, I was involved with it last year. And there's a lot, there's a lot to it. There's you know, which I can't get into, but it, it's it's you can. Get, there's a great website, www.meandfansalute.com, and it's. Uh, I know we're here in Dallas. We we have next week the Cleveland game. We have uh, a, a lot of veterans coming to the game, and we're uh, involved. Uh, and so around the league, the NFL and, and USA are doing a lot for veterans, and it's called Salute to Service, and it's it's a it's a neat program. And you know, I'm proud to be part of it. In Dallas, you're you're there. When you walk around, are, are you royalty? Do people come up to you? Is it is it every minute of the day? Still in Dallas, even at this point in your in your life? No, oh, I wouldn't say royalty. I, I, there's good memories. Uh, there's memories of you know we we had you know winning seasons and we had some really good times and we had some rough times. But people remember the good times. So it's you know I'm you know uh, another quarterback that you know Troy Aikman was phenomenal with the Cowboys. He I think Troy is really one of the great quarterbacks and uh, he's I saw him last night. We were at actually a SEAL Legacy dinner last night uh, for, for the Navy SEALs here in Dallas and. Troy was there, and you know people really are nice. They they remember the '90s when his Super Bowls, and and there's some older people there at the dinner that remembered <laughs> remembered <laughs> the '70s too. So it's it's fun to be remembered, and if you're not remembered, you know that's just part of life. Uh, but I'm you know I've been very fortunate to to be able to uh, go to the Naval Academy and also get a chance to play for the Dallas Cowboys. You know I could have. I could have ended up there with the Saints or somebody, you know. But I, yeah, you I commiserate up. with Archie a little bit on that. <laughs> yeah, I, I kid Archie about that. <laughs> He's got a couple of sons that are making up for his. Uh, Archie was a heck of a quarterback on, on a rough team, though, back then, and you got he's got a couple of. Uh, couple kids are pretty good quarterbacks. You're right. The football gods are taking care of him now, <laughs> that's for sure. I can't tell you what a pleasure this has been. I could talk to you all day. If I'm ever in Dallas, I'm going to try to find a way to look you up. I appreciate it so much and Thanks. continued good health with your family and success. And uh, you're just a, a great, great example of uh, what a pro athlete should be. Well, thanks, Anthony. Appreciate it.